This is the shape of things to come, or really the shape of the current automobile industry. Seems there's no stopping the shift from sedans to SUVs and crossovers. It's what buyers are choosing these days to haul kids, groceries, and, uh, well, just about anything, which is why people want them. So, the new fourth generation Santa Fe is very important to Hyundai. Consider the company has brought the North American CEO to talk with us at the press launch in, where else? Park City, Utah. We have ambitious goals. Starting with redefining this vehicle. Six years ago, pretty much to the day and in this exact spot, I was explaining to you that Hyundai was ditching the Veracruz name for its three-row crossover and going with the moniker Santa Fe. The two-row would become the Santa Fe Sport which I thought was confusing, and maybe I was right, because going forward, the two-row is Santa Fe. Simply Santa Fe, no sport. For now, the three-row model is the Santa Fe XL. A new model will get a different name altogether, possibly Palisade. The 2019 two-door is an all-new vehicle up against some established players. So when you look at this data, you'll see that Ford Edge, Murano, Jeep Cherokee, the new Blazer that's coming uh, soon, the Sorento, and of course Outback. These are key vehicles in terms of similar price, similar size, and similar cross shopping. The cars on hand were top trim ultimate models. The retail price of this particular car is $39,900. For that kind of coin, the interior is nicely trimmed out with rich materials and accents that catch the eye. The glass roof is huge. Ultimate is the only model to get a surround view camera system if you're prone to running into things. Even base models get standard Hyundai Smart Sense, which is the company's suite of active safety electronics. The highlights are automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control with stop and go ability, a very good lane keep assist that doesn't wander around like a drunken sailor, active blind spot warning that helps to pull the car back into its lane, and rear cross path collision avoidance. Expect to see a lot of ads stressing this tech. Two engines are available, a 2.4-liter normally aspirated four-cylinder with 185 horsepower and 178 pound-feet of torque is standard on all models. The engine that we're driving in the mountains of Utah is a 2-liter turbocharged four, pumping out 235 horses and 260 pound-feet. Both engines get electrically actuated variable valve timing. You know why we're not driving the normally aspirated engine on this event, right? Park City is at altitude where turbos shine. Normal engines, not so much. There's now an eight-speed transmission and it gets a number of improvements to make it more efficient. No paddle shifters, but there are drive modes. The H-Track all-wheel drive system, a $1,700 option on all models, can send up to 50% of torque to the rear wheels. It's designed to be predictive to the elements, not reactive. Okay, so I'm at 8,000 feet. That will affect the turbo engine's performance a little bit. In sport mode, this is pretty responsive. There's not much lag from the throttle. In the regular modes, you can definitely feel the power building slower. I'd like to drive this car closer to sea level to judge power delivery, but it seems quick and sure. The eight-speed transmission kicks down for passing fairly well in sport mode. It's more leisurely in the others. Gear shifts are smooth and sure. The windshield and front side are acoustical laminated glass. There are new foam pads in the floor and the dashboard. That makes Santa Fe much, much quieter now. If it's not as hushed as near luxury crossovers like Acura RDX and Volvo XC60, it's darn close. Handling is impressive for a crossover. Santa Fe had no problem hustling through tight curvy sections on the drive route. Brake torque vectoring helps. The front suspension gets new geometry and a lot of components made out of aluminum. The rear suspension gets a shock absorber that's mounted bolt upright rather than angled on the outgoing Santa Fe Sport. It makes a huge difference in ride quality. If you're sensitive to fuel economy, this all-wheel drive turbo model has an EPA rated average of 21 miles per gallon on standard grade gas, which is least efficient in class. Fuel-saving automatic engine start-stop system? Yes, Santa Fe has one. And this one is pretty smooth. Fortunately for those who don't like them, 
it can be turned off. The drive route had a good 15 miles of gravel road. The kind crossovers see if owners are the outdoorsy type. It's good for testing the structure. It gets more high strength steel and bonding adhesive. Santa Fe is vault solid with little chassis flex or quiver, even over large bumps. This is a pretty typical rough dirt road and it shows an awful lot about what the suspension is all about. It's not skittering all over the road. It's very controlled and composed. Naturally, the all-wheel drive system adds control on dirt, but the front-wheel drive models would have no issue on these roads. For the few that push crossovers on the harder side, Hyundai pointed us to a fairly steep strip that was partially washed out the day before. Here, it's helpful that the all-wheel drive system can be locked. You know, the camera never really shows how steep and rough these situations are. I doubt that any Santa Fe owner will ever take their vehicle up anything like this. Maybe their teenage kids will, but the owners won't. Mom and dad will probably never know about the shenanigans. Back to the interior, it's also available in tan and gray. The ambiance in this top trim model is near luxury with unique wood-like trim. It's not real trees. The 12-speaker Infinity Sound System delivers solid sound. Hyundai points out that the improved seats use different foam densities in various places. They're vented and heated. The driver's chair has a cushion adjustable for length. Wireless charging, too. Looking hard for gripes in my eight hours with this rig, there's no built-in Wi-Fi hotspot for those who want that. The heathered look fabric on the eight pillars and headliner might be a bit earthy looking for some, and the seats don't have luxury grade construction. Spend a lot more money on a Lexus or Audi if this bothers you. The user interface, it's standard Hyundai fare with good tactile response. It's nothing groundbreaking, but you don't have to be a member of Mensa to figure it out. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard on all Santa Fe's. Santa Fe's back seat is very spacious. Headroom is good. There's loads of knee, foot, and leg room. Plus, my favorite feature in a back seat, extra cargo room or extra leg room. I'd like to know where the seat pocket is on this side, though. Making up for that are sunshades and generous storage for all the things that families haul around. Charging electronics will not be an issue. Neither will cold bottoms. The outboard seats are heated. Compared to Jeep Cherokee, there's an additional six inches of hip room back here. It's about an inch up on Murano and Outback, too, but an inch narrower than Edge. Hyundai has a new backseat technology that's very interesting, and rather than have me explain it poorly, I'll have you watch the video that they've produced. She parks the car and, being the busy person she is, forgets that her dog is sleeping in the back. The first alert pops up on the center cluster, letting her know to check rear seats. Now let's say she ignores that warning. She exits the vehicle and locks the Santa Fe. Ultrasonic sensors take over and can detect movement in the rear seats for 24 hours. Now if movement is detected, the Santa Fe's horn will sound and lights will flash. A blue link push notification and text message will be sent to her smartphone. An email will also be sent, letting her know that the rear occupant alert has detected movement. Okay, back to Park City. The power tailgate can be set to two different speeds, and by simply standing next to it for a few seconds with the proximity key in my pocket, the door opens. No need to kick under the tailgate. I've not seen a Costco, so I will not be doing that test. I've seen a moose, but I have not seen a Costco. It almost looks like there's room to wedge a third row into the cargo bins that are under the floor. I'm a fan of 40-20-40 split seats. Santa Fe does not offer those. The floor is flat and the space is large, just what people are looking for in crossovers. With the seats dropped, Santa Fe is a couple cubic feet shy of Edge, Outback, and Sorrento, but larger than Cherokee by a significant 16. On these events with limited time, I'm laser focused on trying to find shortcomings and try to look past all of the upscale features found on the top trim levels that manufacturers usually give automotive riders. Other than fuel economy, Santa Fe is an exceptionally well done crossover. Generation 4 is more traditional looking than the rakish Sport. A strong belt line anchors the front to the back. There are interesting flourishes and fender lines with deep draws. Jeep abandoned this kind of lighting setup on the Cherokee for a more traditional look. Yes, the headlights are down here. Black and orange paint are paired with dark chrome accents. 
Hyundai used to be all about cheap and cheerful. That strategy has been replaced with bang for the buck, and the Santa Fe definitely has that. All versions offer comfort, refinement, utility, and advanced active safety tech. The ultimate model is nearly near luxury. It should be high on the test drive list. Since crossovers are the shape of things to come, you'll probably be seeing a lot of Santa Fe's on the road. Again, I have limited time on these events, so I can't demonstrate all of the tech features. So let's go to the videotape. One that's available is Safe Exit Assist. Mom, we're gonna be late to the game. All parents have heard that before. The tech uses the blind spot sensors and sends a warning if a car is coming from behind. It won't allow the child lock to be defeated if danger is detected. At the very least, it sends out a warning to stay in the car. You've made it to the very end. Time for a fun fact. Did you know that Santa Fe is named after a town in the state of New Mexico? Didn't say it would be a good fun fact. Please feel free to apply for a full refund if you are unhappy, okay? <laughs> That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.